Hola, e. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Um, as you can see, today's topic is the Hail Mary. Where does the Hail Mary come from? The Hail Mary is composed of three parts. The first part, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. The second part, blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And the third part, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The first part comes from Scripture, Luke 1, verse 28. The salutation of the angel Gabriel to Mary. Part 2 comes from Scripture, Luke chapter 1, verse 42. Her cousin Elizabeth filled with the Holy Spirit. And part 3 is a little different. It doesn't come from Scripture, but it addresses a petition to the Blessed Mother. And then down here you have a picture of the Annunciation. What does the Catechism of the Catholic Church teach about Mary? Here's what the Catechism has to say. So I read this, kind of dissected it, and I took that dissection and kind of placed it in my slides for the future. And so I'll put this whole thing down in the description below, plus the link to the Catechism, if you're curious. So explaining the Catechism, paragraph 2676, part 1. So rejoice, Mary, you are to bear the Messiah. Hail Mary, or rejoice, Mary, is the greeting of the angel Gabriel that opens this prayer. From Luke 1, verse 28. It is God himself who through the angel as into Mary, greets Mary. When we say hail, we are telling her to rejoice in the good news, that the Messiah would be born of her womb, and according to her free choice to say yes to the Lord's will. And then here's a definition of intermediary, a person who acts as a link between in order to try to bring about an agreement or a reconciliation so basically God told the angel what to say and then the angel said yes and then the angel Gabriel went to Mary and said exactly what God wanted to say to Mary and all of heaven was waiting for her to say yes or no to see if the Messiah would come into the world Expanding the Catechism, paragraph 2676, part 2. The salutation of the angel Gabriel to Mary. Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Luke 1, 28. These two phrases of the angel's greeting shed light on one another. First, Mary is full of grace because the Lord is with her. Second, the grace with which she is filled is the presence of him whom is the source of all grace. The Ark of the Covenant, the place where the glory of God dwells, she is the dwelling of God with men. Full of grace, Mary is wholly given. Her whole being is given to him who has come to dwell in her and whom she is about to give to the world. So Jesus could have only came through the world because Mary said yes. So the Messiah, the Savior of the world, who saved us from the eternal fires of hell, has come through a woman, and her name was Mary. Expanding the Catechism, paragraph 2676, part 3. Her cousin Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. That part comes from Scripture. 
and then we add Jesus in the Hail Mary. So filled with the Holy Spirit, Elizabeth is the first in the long succession of generations who have called Mary blessed among women. Mary, because of her faith, became the mother of all believers, through whom all the nations of the earth received him, who is God's own blessing, Jesus, the fruit of thy womb. Expanding the Catechism, paragraph 2677, part 1. The Petition to the Mother of God Holy Mary, Mother of God, because she gives us Jesus, her Son, Mary is the Mother of God, and our Mother. She prays for us as she prayed for herself. Let it be done unto me according to thy word. By entrusting ourselves to the will of God together with her, thy will be done. Expanding the Catechism, paragraph 2677, part 2. Help us at our hour of death, O gate of heaven. Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. We address ourselves to the Mother of Mercy and acknowledge ourselves as poor sinners. We surrender the hour of our death wholly to her care. As she was at the foot of the cross at the hour of Jesus' death, we ask her to be with us at the hour of our own. May she welcome us as our mother and at the hour of our death to lead us to her son, Jesus, in paradise. So here's a picture of uh, particular judgment. On the left side is a good Catholic family, and the person who died probably received the sacrament of confession and the Eucharist one last time, and uh, the peers around her her. Her family member probably prayed the rosary and the divine mercy and then her soul is going up to see Jesus and there's Mary and here's the damned soul on the right um, who denied God's love and God's way of doing things in the world and the truth and sadly is gonna spend forever in hell hell is a reality but Here's some good news. Jesus blessed us with forgiveness of sins on the cross, yes. But we must accept that forgiveness with a continual yes, like Mary. May it be done to me according to thy word. And so Mary is our mother. Time out. If you look down in the description, there's lots of like links to like Bible verses. Uh, the Gospel of John on YouTube, the Catechism, some of my other videos, and just, you know, things that might help you if you have questions. Or you could just simply pray as well. Jesus is always good to go to if you have anything to say, anything you're worried about, or if you're just excited and love spending time with the Lord in prayer. So Mary is our mother. On the cross, Jesus gave to the disciple whom he loved. Jesus loves all his disciples. His mother Mary, and to Mary, the disciple he loved. This verse in John's Gospel is Jesus giving us the incredible gift of his mother. And here is the verse, John chapter 19, 25-27. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Calabas, and Mary Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother there, and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, Here is your mother. From that time on, 
this disciple took her into his home. The true gift of Mary's motherhood in our lives is greater than we can comprehend. And she loves her children with her immaculate heart. Whenever we go to Mary in prayer, she brings us to Jesus. Whenever we love Mary, we love Jesus. And when we accept Mary as our mother, we will know a love that exceeds all things. And with that, thank you for tuning in. I hope you learned something. Keep up the Hail Marys and keep persisting in your faith. May God bless you, protect you, and watch over you. Bye.